The Bible says the whole, uh, for what shall, he, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? That lets me know right there that your soul is in your hand. Amen. 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 Your soul is in your hand. You can do with it whatsoever you want. But the Bible tells us if we gain the whole world and lose our soul, we didn't really profit anything. Right. Because this little space of time we here, we live here on earth is in any way comparable to eternity. Our finite minds can't even think about eternity because we can't think that far in advance because it's forever. So there's going to be a forever in heaven or forever in hell. Many preachers no longer preach that. They're too afraid to offend anybody. But let me assure you today that the Word of God said that His Word shall bring offense. So I'm out to offend anybody and everybody. Amen. So that it would prick them into their heart. Amen. And they could realize that they have a heaven to go to and a hell to shun. I don't want to stand there before God on Judgment Day with my hands dripping with people's blood because I was afraid to tell them the truth. I was more interested in nickels and noses than I were in souls being saved. We need to realize, amen, sometimes it takes a, a difficult word for people to realize where they need to go and where they come from. Amen. I'm going to read you a little article here this morning. It's no secret we live in an upside-down world. And this article was written by Stephen Strange. We're living in an upside-down world where evil is now called good and good is called evil. While many of us believe God raised up America as a shining city or on a hill, let's face it, the United States is more and more evil and deserves to be judged. History is full of difficult times for believers. Indeed, many millions of Christians are being persecuted in our generation. But Christians in America live in what often seems like a bubble. Because of our constitutional rights, we have freedom not enjoyed in other countries, yet we now live in a post-Christian culture. There have been terrible times before, but it seemed as though God always came through in answer to prayer. Fifty years ago in the hippie era, the Jesus movement, went, which impacted me and many others, amen, brought millions of rebellious young people to faith in Christ. When America seemed at a low ebb during the Jimmy Carter administration, something seemed to shift when hundreds of thousands of Christians humbled themselves and prayed and repented for Americans at Washington for Jesus in 1980. Me and my wife was there. The church sent us down there. We participated in that movement that was there. Amen. But now we're living in a different time and a different age. We're living in a time when it seems like uh, evil is taking over in America. I mean, if you were in a foreign country, you could understand that because communism or those countries that live under different uh, uh, rules of religion and different things of that nature, you'll find that many of them do not enjoy the freedoms you have today. And so often we take those freedoms for granted. I saw a picture, and I've even used it before on Facebook myself, where thousands of people are sitting in a stadium watching a football game with their hair frozen and, and, and their noses uh, dripping with icicles on them. But yet they bear that weather, amen, to get to that football game because their team was playing. Uh, let me assure you this morning, my team is playing, amen. amen. Jesus Christ, uh, hallelujah, is the team that I want to be on. Uh, and if it's going to cause me a little hardship uh, every once in a while. I'm going to bear the weather and the storm. Can someone say amen? Uh, you'll find in the Word of God that many times
times the disciples faced uh, many storms in their life. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about all the beatings he received. Uh, he talks about the stoning uh, that he received. He talked about being stoned and left for dead, yet God uh, raised him up. Uh, we read about a man called Stephen uh, who was stoned uh, for nothing more than preaching the gospel. Uh, no, he wasn't no great evangelist. He was just one of those uh, who carried the word of God. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, amen, while he was being stoned, uh, he wanted to be like Jesus. So he looked up into heaven and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, the same words that Jesus said uh, on the cross of Calvary uh, while his accusers watched him uh, and while his, those uh, that were going to slay him, uh, slay him, uh, he forgave them. Can somebody praise the Lord? Uh, sometimes we don't know how great God is. Uh, sometimes we don't realize how merciful God has been to us in our life. Uh, but let me assure you, he's been merciful. Yes, he has. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Genesis 3.10, talking about Adam and Eve, said, I heard you and was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. That's what's happening to a lot of people today. They hear the voice of God, but they're hiding trying to hide behind some leaves and trying to hide uh, a man from God's voice when God only wanted to come down uh, and have fellowship with them. That's what happens, folks. Uh, when you begin to stray from God uh, and you get further from God, the Bible says uh, if you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to you. But if you walk away from God, uh, the Bible teaches us uh, a man story that Jesus told uh, about a prodigal son. Uh, and the Bible says that younger son wanted everything that was going to come to him in the inheritance and he went out and foolishly wasted it upon harlots and everything else. He thought he had a lot of friends but when time came when the money ran out he found out the friends were all gone. He couldn't buy the next round. Amen. He couldn't pay the prostitute. He couldn't live in the hotel. He couldn't do anything but feed the pigs and would have ate the same husk uh, of the corn as the pigs were eating, uh, but no man would even give him that. Uh, let me assure you, uh, the Bible said he went, uh, amen, far away. Uh, he went far away from his father's house, uh, but the Bible says uh, that the father stayed right at home. Uh, he never got up, uh, never went to the pig pen uh, to try to find uh, that younger son, uh, but he stayed right there. Uh, he looked down that old dusty road hoping uh, one day uh, that lost sheep uh, would come back to the fold uh, and one day he did uh, and the father said come on in uh, we're going to kill the fatty calf uh, hallelujah and make merry amen the oldest brother got mad he said I've been here all these years and I've done everything you wanted me to do and you never even killed a kid for me or a small goat so that I may marry with my friends. And you know what the father said? It was here all the time. It was always yours. It was your inheritance. Your brother had already gotten his. He'd already wasted his. It was always yours. But now you have sat here, worked here, and never enjoyed the fruits of your labor. That's like many of us today, amen. We're expecting God to give us something we already have. Amen. We don't need to get something we already have. What do we have? The Bible says we have power. We have power over all the power of the enemy. And yet many, amen, let the devil run uh, over them constantly and continually without ever praying a prayer and defeating the devil in their life. Uh, the Bible says we have healing. He bore 39 stripes uh, on his back that we would be healed. Uh, the Bible says we have salvation. Uh, the precious blood of the Lamb 
Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the world has given his life so that you might have life. But if you come to church, amen, and all you do is sit here and you can't even endure a little service, amen, without, without getting, amen, a place where your mind's no longer on the Word of God, shame on you. Amen. But it happens all the time. The services all over the country. People sit there and come to church just to be noticed and go home. They don't have anything different than they came with. Lives haven't changed any way, any form, any fashion. I sometimes wonder if we just neglected to see anymore the scripture that says, uh, if you're born again, old things pass away and behold, all things become new. It doesn't mean you get saved and your old life is the same as it was before. It means you get saved and your life is radically changed for Jesus. Uh, amen. When I got saved, I didn't wake up the next day a drunk and a drug addict. Uh, I woke up the next day, amen, cleansed by the precious blood uh, of the Lamb of God. Uh, I woke up the next day with my mind stayed upon the Lord uh, and He kept me in perfect peace. Uh, I woke up the next day uh, transformed uh, from an evil person to a righteous man. Uh, not my own righteous, but Christ lived uh, within me and His righteousness are in me. Uh, can somebody praise the Lord this morning? Uh, hallelujah. We need to realize God is God. Uh, whether we accept that or not, uh, He's still God. Hear people all the time, I don't believe in hell. It doesn't make any difference if you believe in hell or not. Yeah. Hell is still real, but I don't believe in God. So, amen. You can't see air, but you need it to breathe. Amen. It's still there. You still need it. And you know what? You are God's creation and you need God. Amen. You think God came down in the cool of the day to walk and talk with Adam and Eve uh, just because he had nothing else to do? No. He wanted a family. Amen. He wanted children. That's why we pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Amen? Yes. And deliver us from evil. Me and my wife started praying together every day. Amen. To start the day off in prayer, and believe in God to make the day a successful day. And you can sit around, amen, and wonder all day long if God can do something for you. And God never does it. Because see, it takes faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And faith, amen, has to have feet. Because dead faith doesn't work. Faith without works is dead. So you've got to use that faith. You've got to use wisdom in that faith. Amen. God lets us know that we as the people of God need Him. We need His Word. Right. People sit home today and wonder, you know, well, I, I'll just watch it on YouTube. There ain't going to be no amen watching on Facebook today. Because I'm not putting it on Facebook. Amen. amen. You couldn't come, then you couldn't come. We've got too used to that stuff. Uh, amen. During the covid Hallelujah. Everybody got used to staying home and not coming to the house of God. What happened to let us assemble ourselves together? Amen. What happened to not assembling together to worship and praise and give glory to God? It, it just went by the wayside. And many people, as you see today, it's all over the country, not just here, all over the country, where empty seats are sitting in chairs. Amen. It used to be filled with people. Why? Because they got used to have some somebody spoon feeding them on social media. Yeah. That's the truth, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Well, Pastor, it's a good way to preach. Yeah, it's a good way to preach to sinners. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's not a good way to preach to Christians. Yeah. All this television and media and everything else, that shouldn't be just for Christians. That should be for the world. So if the only ministry you're doing is folks that's trying to stay home from the house of God, then you're not accomplishing very much. Because those folks have heard the gospel continually. And I believe, amen, you shouldn't even be afforded to hear the gospel twice until everybody else has heard it at least once. 
And the Bible says this gospel is going to be preached in all the world. Amen. Amen. To every kindred, to every tongue, to every nation, the word of God is going to be ministered. Jesus, amen, stands at the door and he knocks. You can be like Adam and Eve. You can hide yourself. Amen. You can be like other men of God, like Jonah. The Bible says Jonah ran from the presence of God in his disobedience to preach the gospel. Or you can be like Cain who said, my punishment's more than I can bear because I'm driven from the presence of God. Don't get to a point in your life where you're driven from God's presence, amen. We need God's presence in our life because it's in the presence of God that we find our liberty. We find, amen, our freedom. Uh, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, there is freedom, glory to God. John 1, 14, it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We need the Word of God. Amen. I'll never forget this. not just our age. I'll never forget. Amen, Brother Charles, years ago, when I taught, uh, and we taught here a Bible college course, and amazingly the church was full of people, but amazingly hardly anyone knew anything about the Bible. It was amazing. Most of you, them couldn't even quote John 3, 16, 17. They knew very little about the Word of God. And, and it wasn't only something, amen, that really disturbed me as a pastor because I'm the one preaching to them. But you know what I found? I found you can take down your antenna, the reception, amen, and set under the power of God, set under the Word of God, and never receive nothing from God. Yeah. See, there's a dead letter of the Word also. If you don't have the anointing behind the pulpit, the Word of God is going to go forth and it's just not going to penetrate the carnal minds and the hearts. We need God to move in a mighty way in our world today. Amen. Folks, we look around today and we realize that things are not getting better. Oh, we think that Trump was the great hope. Trump is not the great hope. Was he a good president? Sure he was. Did he do some good things? Sure he did. Did he do what he said he was going to do? No, he didn't. But God will. God's word cannot lie. He is not a man that he should lie. Every word that God speaks will not return unto him void. It shall accomplish that which he set it forth to do. Amen. Men will fail you. Family will fail you. Yep. But God will never fail you. Amen. God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you even to the ends of this world. Folks, we're almost at the end. We're almost at the end. But like I said, here in America, we've been so pampered and baby that we think that we might not ever go through anything. And I beg your pardon. You need to read uh, Fox's book of martyrs and it began to curl your hair as you read uh, what those early Christians went through. Some hung in nets, uh, amen, and bulls gored them until they looked like hamburger meat. Uh, and, and just horrible deaths. Uh, to the point that it got to be where the lions, amen, would come out uh, and just set by those that they were going to eventually devour. Amen. God will let the king know that even though he put him in the lion's den there, now if I tell them not to eat them, they're not going to eat them. But God allowed them to be eaten. Amen. And God's going to allow us to be going through a lot of things. And, and we think, well, no, 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 that's, that, 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 that can't be our God. Yes, it can. Because you know what? You're going to be tried as, as with the fire. Amen. All that hay, stick, and stubble going to be burned off. All that stuff, amen, is going to be tried like a gold in a refiner's fire. All the impurities have to be scraped off. How do I know that? Because the Bible says Jesus is coming uh, for a church without a spot, uh, without a blemish, uh, without a wrinkle or any such thing. That right there tells me uh, he's not coming for an old ragged Sinfield church. Uh, he's coming for a church, amen, uh, that is a bride, a uh, adorned in 
light, uh, which means holy. Uh, hallelujah. He's coming for a church uh, that is dedicated and consecrated themselves totally and holy to God. Uh, amen. The Bible says uh, it's your reasonable sacrifice to present yourself uh, a living sacrifice, holy uh, and acceptable unto God. Uh, amen. How dare we come to church uh, and think that we can all offer God something uh, that costs us nothing. That's right. Amen. Amen. Word of God says in one part of the Bible where the man of God said, I'm not going to offer God something that costs me nothing. Mm. Amen. Mm. Even Abraham, when he was seeking to bury his wife Sarah, wanted to buy a plot of land in a cave, and the man says, What is that? to me and you. It's worth 300 shekels of silver, but what's that between friends? He said, no, 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 no. I have to purchase it. I'm not going to bury my family in a place that I didn't buy. In other words, if it don't cost you nothing, it means nothing. And we've got to count the cost, the Bible says. Count the cost. And we've got to count it every single day. When we get up in the morning, before we go to bed at night, we need to count the cost. What's it going to take for us to continue on? Yep. Many start building and then find out they don't have enough to finish. Right. I used to pass in church. Amen. Coming soon. Had the church's name. Material all laying out there. Foundation already dug. Cement already there. Getting ready to build. But it never got finished. The sign for the church came down and the for sale sign went up. Why? Because they never counted the cost. you got to count the cost. Amen? Amen. We count the cost. And, and you know, unless you believe God, you're not going to make it. That's right. As much as we do in this little church and as much money as we give outside of this little church, amen, we would never be able to make it without God. That's right. amen. We'd never be able to, to keep this place going and, and up without God. Amen. Yesterday, just the parking lot, $100 to get it scraped off. 100 bucks just to get it scraped off. Amen. Water softener. 2800 bucks because you need a water softener because we got well water. Mm. Changed the filter the other day, a quarter of an inch of rust yeah. on the filter. I'm not lying. Oh. Terrible. Amen. You might want to live in your house like that, but I don't want to live in my house like that. Amen. I don't want that stuff down at the church like that. Mm -hmm. I want this place to at least look presentable. Amen. 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 All the works we've done here and everything that we've try to accomplish here. It takes counting the cost. So when people ask about paying tithes, yeah, everybody should pay tithes. That's right. Amen? Mm -hmm. I know an argument one time with a preacher when I was down in Texas, I believe it was, and he's talking about you don't need to pay tithes. The reason why he was talking that way is because he was too stingy to pay tithes. Yeah. 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 He didn't have enough faith to pay tithes. Amen. I, I, I blasted him about it. Because he's going to blast a friend of mine about putting it on there about paying tithes. Let me tell you something. If you're too stingy and trifling, amen, to believe God, then you know what? You ain't never going to be successful. Amen. But if you'll trust God and believe God, you will eventually be successful. Amen. I didn't start off where I'm at right now. Brother, I started off in places, amen, where we had to believe God for the next meal. But right now, I can take all of you out this morning for a meal. Cover the, cover the charges, amen, cover the tip and everything, and it ain't going to bother me one bit. My income is that blessed. Amen. But see, you've got to wait on that. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. He will renew your strength, amen? amen. Right. In your patience, you possess your soul. Just because you hit a rough spot, amen, doesn't mean it's all over. God is just trying you to see if you're going to be faithful through the hard time as well as you're going to be faithful through the good times. Can someone say that? We don't always understand that. But God told Abraham, I want your son Isaac, amen, 
The first conversation, he said, you're going to sacrifice your son. He said, i got two sons. He said, no, I'm, I mean the son of promise is you're going to sacrifice us. You know, he even told him, God, God said, I want the one you love. And he said, I love them both. God said, the promised child. There was an argument there between him and God. Amen. So he finally, amen, God won the argument. And he took his son Isaac up. And Isaac said, hey, Father, we got these, the wood and we, we've got the knife. But where is the sacrifice? See, not even in Abraham's mind did he know what God was going to do. But while Abraham was walking up one side of the mountain, there was a ram coming up the other side of the mountain. God let it go so far that he laid Isaac on the wood, amen, getting ready to plunge the knife into his chest. And the angel of the Lord said, do the boy no harm. Amen, there's a ram in the bush. God always has a ram in the bush. But so many times we, amen, do not see the promises of God. Right. So many times we fail to hear the Word of God. And as I said, we need God's Word more than ever before. What if Abraham couldn't hear God's voice? He would have killed Isaac. Amen. When the Bible tells us, Abraham, it wasn't Isaac I wanted it was you. I wanted to know that you were so faithful to me, you were willing to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to give my only begotten son. Amen. And that was a picture of what God was going to do. Give Jesus Christ for us. Dare say there's not many of us that would sacrifice our only son. Amen. Amen. Just be truthful this morning. But God did. Amen. So this time, this hour, we need to be led by God's Spirit. In Matthew 4, 1 through 4, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. The devil's always trying to get you to question who you are. You're a child of God. Amen. He tried to get Jesus to question who he is. Hey, Jesus, if you're really the Son of God, perform for me. Well, we ain't got to perform for no devil. Okay. Amen. Amen. We ain't got to perform for no devil. All we got to do is live for God. Amen. Jesus said it is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by but every word that comes from the mouth of God. We live on His every word, His eternal word. Uh, can somebody praise the Lord? Uh, Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, if you ain't got nothing out of the service except this, uh, know this. Uh, if you are walking the Spirit, amen, God will hear you and God will listen to you and God will answer you. Amen. If you are walking the flesh, you'll fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. You'll have those same old addictions you've always had. You'll never have victory in your life. You'll never be more than a conqueror in Christ. You will never be an overcomer. You will just be that same individual that want to live for God but can't live for God because you won't get Give it up. Right. There'll be those that say, Pastor, I just can't. No, the truth of the matter is, you just won't. That's the truth. I could have said, I can't give up alcohol. I, I've been this way too long, man. I, I've been a drunk for too long. I've got too many demons. I mean, you know. Uh, the war still haunts me. This still haunts me. My past life still haunts me. You know, alcohol soothes me. No, I didn't say all that junk. I had something new. Amen. New wine. Amen. 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 You can't put new wine in old bottles because if you do, it's going to explode. Can somebody say amen? amen. So praise be to God. We've got that new wine. All we've got to do is just worship the Lord, stay faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ, and walk in His Spirit, and we shall not fulfill the lusts and desires of our flesh. Amen. So if you're here today and you heard what's been preached today, make this day a day of victory. Amen. Make this day a day, amen, when you decide you're going further with God, than you went yesterday. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. You're going to get closer to God 
than you were yesterday. Yes. Because the closer you get to God, guess what? The more impure you are Amen. in your own sight. Just like in the mirror. You can stand 50 foot away from the mirror and you can hide those pimples. You can hide those wrinkles. You can hide all kinds of stuff that far away from the mirror because you really can't see. But the closer you get to that, every little imperfection mm -hmm. comes out. Amen? Amen? As long as I don't look in the mirror, Josh, I'm just a 15-year-old boy <laughs> struggling, amen, to manhood. Amen. Because, see, I'm not looking in the mirror. But when I look in that mirror, I realize, man, I'm a 74-year-old man. I've lived most of my life. Now I'm on the season of, of, of no return here. Amen. I'm, I'm going on to be with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. My salvation is nearer today than it was yesterday. Amen. I'm not going to live forever. Amen. And, and I take that with no regret. Amen. I'm not going to live forever. I wish that I could go back and change a lot of stuff, but I've never had a regret serving God because God's always Amen. been really good to me. God has always been better to me and I've been better to myself, Brother Steve. I see so many people lose out for such little insignificant things. So I carry you back to the first scripture. What will a man profit? If he gained the whole world and lose his soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Some people will give little or nothing, amen. Little or nothing. And the devil will snatch their soul into an eternity of hell. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I told you today that most of the stuff you see on the news today is not real. It's not real. You'll see them say that there's a great storm somewhere, and then behind, when if you look over and pan behind them, the streets are clear, there's no water, and come to find out, the news man. Is on his knees in about a foot of water that hadn't went down the gutter yet. And they're talking about what a great flood it was. Most of the stuff we see is not what is really going on. Not in politics, not in anything else. We don't see the whole truth. But the truth of the Word of God is what makes us free. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is the truth. That's right. Standing in front of Pilate, Pilate asked him, what is truth? Well, truth was standing right in front of him. But he never recognized it because he didn't have eyes to see or ears to hear what the truth is. If you do, thank God for that. Because many don't. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a great big round of applause.